Hi everyone, I'm Marcy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make homemade apple butter. I made some a couple of weeks ago and have been enjoying it in the morning on my toast, so I thought I'd whip up another batch and share it with you this time. First, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it helps others find me. And let's do this. The recipe I'm using is one I found at my mom's house the last time that we visited, and it turned out really good, although I thought it was just a tiny bit too sweet. So I'm gonna be using just a little less sugar this time. I'm also going to be peeling the apples, which you don't have to do, but I just wanna be able to compare the two different versions. Either way, I'll put all the options, ingredients, and amounts in the description box below for you. So you're gonna start off with six cups of apples that have been cored and cut into pieces. Now, just so you know, uh, that was seven apples for me because uh, they were all different sizes. You can tell some of these are really small. Um, and then also you can use whatever kind of apple you like. Granny Smith tend to be the most popular, but I'm using Fuji because those are my favorite and they're also a really terrific option for apple butter. Now you'll need one cup of apple juice or water, half a cup of brown sugar, the recipe calls for one cup of sugar, but I'm gonna be using about three fourths of a cup this time. You'll also need one tablespoon cinnamon, half a teaspoon cloves, a quarter of a teaspoon allspice, and a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. So let's get started. This particular recipe calls for peeling the apples. As I mentioned, I didn't do that last time, and it all got pureed and turned out fine. Leaving the peels on just made the apple butter thicker, so you decide for yourself if you want to peel or not. I don't have an apple core, so I'm cutting around the core, and then I cut the apple into pieces about an inch or two in size. Once you have six cups of cut apples measured out, put them in a large saucepan along with the apple juice or water. Set your burner on high heat, cover and bring it to a boil. Once it's boiling, lower the heat and let it simmer 20 to 30 minutes until the apples are soft when pressed. Next, we're going to puree. I'm using an immersion blender, which is really handy for this recipe, but if you don't have one, just carefully transfer the apples into a blender or food processor and puree them that way. This definitely pureed faster and smoother without the peeling on the apple. This looks good. When you've got it as smooth as possible, add in the brown sugar, the granulated sugar, the cinnamon, cloves, allspice, and nutmeg, and continue to mix until well combined. Mm, that smells really good. Very cinnamony. All right, now I'm just gonna let it cook down. If you used a blender, take your puree and pour it back into the saucepan at this point because it needs to continue simmering. This apple butter is done anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes is what you're looking for. Just so you know, I did have the lid on it while it was cooking because I didn't want it to splatter all over the place. I just stirred occasionally. Now I'm just gonna take this over and let it cool and then I'll transfer it into some glass jars. Now I will say that I like the consistency of this apple butter so much more than the one I made a couple of weeks ago. So even though peeling apples is a little more work, moving forward, I will definitely be doing that. Mm. 
But again, it's just a matter of personal preference. If you decide to leave the peels on the uh, apples, just know that it's gonna be a whole lot thicker. This is just closer to what um, you would expect from apple butter. Now let's see what it tastes like. And it's still plenty sweet enough with just the three fourths of a cup of sugar. So this is definitely the way to go. I think you're really gonna like it. Now, when it comes to apple butter, I'm sort of nostalgic because growing up as a kid, we didn't have it all the time. So when we did have it, it was kind of special and I used to love it on my peanut butter sandwiches. And uh, I always thought it was really good and that was store-bought. Now that I've had it homemade, it is so much better. Now you'll wanna just keep it in an airtight container and keep it in the refrigerator. It'll store for up to about a month. But anyway, I really hope you try this. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me at Marcy Inspired on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, blessings from my kitchen to yours.